Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist, and it's my pleasure to show you what's new in Lightroom CC, the April 2018 update. So I've got some photos here, a variety of different photos from Iceland and Paris and some portraits to show off the new profiles feature. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, what are profiles? Didn't we have profiles before? And yes and no. There are all kinds of different profiles that you know you might be thinking of. There are, there are cam camera calibration profiles, there are monitor profiles, there are camera raw profiles, there are artistic profiles, just all kinds of profiles in the past. But now these profiles have been standardized and organized and expanded here in Lightroom CC. So first and foremost, I'm working with a raw file. And this particular raw file um, is just kind of out of the camera. This is the way it looked. Now, normally, when you brought an image into Lightroom CC, it would automatically apply kind of a flat-looking Adobe Standard. Well, this is Adobe Standard 2.0, so it's a little bit better. But if you were to import an image today, it would actually come in as Adobe Color. And all of these camera raw profiles are designed to give you a better starting point. So for example, um, Adobe Color would be the one I'd get from by default because again, it's not really paying attention to what this is. But if I said, you know what? I think a better starting point would be Adobe Landscape. And Adobe Landscape starting to bring out some more color, bring out some more detail, and giving me a much better starting point. Now these, of course, are non-destructive. They can be changed at any time, no matter what other edits you've done. So they're not dependent on the traditional sliders that you would use to edit your photo. And again, these are really designed to give you a better starting point. So I can apply Adobe Landscape and say, well, wow, that looks great from a starting point, but there are a few things I'd still want to do. So for example, maybe I'd want to uh, bring down the whites in this particular photo and perhaps bring down the blacks a bit more as well, increase the contrast, and really start to make this photo pop, bring down uh, the highlights a bit to expose that sky a little bit more, and of course, go to my effects panel where I've got the amazing and wonderful dehaze, and just kind of add just a touch of dehaze to this photo to really bring it alive. Now, of course, if I said, hey, I still wanna go back to Adobe Color, I can go back to Adobe Color, or hey, you know, that was better with Adobe Landscape, I can go back to Adobe Landscape, and again, it changes what it changes, but it doesn't change what you've changed. Now, you might think, well, is that it? Well, no, because that's just for the raw, those are the, the Adobe Raw profiles. There's even one called Adobe Vivid. But what if you want to be more artistic? So if you click Browse, you'll notice that there are some new ones. There are the favorites, which are the Adobe ones. And then there, if I scroll all the way down, there's artistic. And that's where I can really start to play with my image. I can really get some artistic effects. There's a black and white category as well. These are awesome for processing and making black and whites. And of course, there's modern, to have more of a modern feel to your image. Um, and any one that you really like and you want to use over and over again, you can click the little star to the upper right corner above it, and that will mark it as a favorite, so you don't have to go find it every single time. So I kind of like that one too. And I'm not really clicking on these, I'm just hovering over them to see what they do to my image, and maybe that's a candidate for something I'm going to do to this image, or something I'd like to do to another image. So these vintage profiles are kind of cool. I, like, I think I like vintage four though, I'm going to pick that one. All right, so now those have been added as favorites. So if I go back to my favorites now, those are mixed in with the Adobe ones as well. And of course, I can always go back and get out of the profile browser and pull down the menu and get to the standard uh, six Adobe profiles plus any favorites I've made. Now, when you use an artistic profile, so for example, let's use, uh, let's use modern one. You have an amount slider. So unlike the camera raw profiles where they're just, they are what they are, this allows me to control how much of this effect I would like to have on my image. So if I really want to crank it up and make it something crazy, I can do that. Or if I want to bring it down a bit and say, well, no, I don't really want that much modern, but a little, I want a little bit more than the middle. So I can go ahead and start at 100, go down from 100, or when was the last time you were able to go over 100? 
hey, I want this to be 150. All right, so you can uh, make this whatever you want it to be when you're applying the artistic profiles. And again, you don't like that artistic profile, you've changed your mind, switch back to Adobe Landscape, and away you go. You have not lost anything. Now, I mentioned that the six original, six new ones here are for raw files. Well, what happens when you pick something that's not a raw file? Like this is a PSD. You'll notice that it says, it just says color, not Adobe color, and I don't get those camera raw profiles. So I wouldn't get the camera raw profiles on JPEGs, TIFFs, PSD files, or anything that's not a raw file. But I do get the ability to use my artistic profile. So again, if I like that modern one, kind of gives it like an edgy look, edgy feel to it, but maybe that's a little bit too much for a portrait, I can pull it back and apply that profile non-destructively anytime I want. Now this particular portrait is a raw file, so if I go back up, I can choose the one that is built for portraits. It's gonna make a subtle change to it, but again, it's a change for the better. This one should be good for skin tones. And if you had a person standing in a landscape, then you might wanna try Adobe Vivid. So that kind of is the best of both worlds for good skin tones, as well as applying a nice look to the background as well. It's a bit much for this particular photo in terms of warming it up, so I'm gonna cool it off just a bit more and get something that looks just like that. So I love the profiles. I love that they give me a much better starting point here in Lightroom CC. I love that they're non-destructive and can be adjusted or turned off or switched at any given time. And I also love that they don't impact my other edits. They'll impact, impact the image visually, but they won't impact my sliders. So with that said, cheers everybody. Thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Go do your update for Lightroom CC. Bye everybody. Uh -huh.